What's up, YouTube? So, I want to talk about this ludicrous colorism situation for a moment. And ludicrous meaning the rapper, not, you know, the word ludicrous, but the rapper ludicrous and this, like, colorism situation that happened a minute ago. All right. So, ludicrous posted something on Instagram, social media. Isn't, it, isn't this how it always happens now? It's like social media, right? <laughs> but Ludacris posted something on social media about his daughter. And, you know, on the surface, you're like, well, what, okay, what harm is that, right? Um, but he had posted a video on Instagram and he captioned it with the following. Quote unquote, when you're raising or when you're raising a half African light skinned baby. And he added or at um, his wife. Um, I think his wife's name is pronounced a uh, Eudoxy. I'm, I'm not sure. So I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her name. Um, but his wife is from Gabon. And that is a country in Africa. Um, and I believe it was colonized by the Portuguese. So because of that, there is um, substantial race mixing um, in Gabon. I believe so. In like Portuguese countries, that tends to happen. Um, as well as Spanish-speaking countries, too. Um, but another story for another day. All right. So... Ludacris wife is uh, lighter skinned as well. And Ludacris, some people debate whether Ludacris is light skinned or dark skinned. Well, I'm going to say dark skinned, but whether he's light skinned or not light skinned, I'll just say that Ludacris is light skinned. That's what I've uh, considered him. Maybe just on the darker side of light skin, but it's debatable. Let me know what you think about that. All right. But back to business. So Ludacris posted, you know, the caption, when you're raising a half African light skinned baby. And some people took some offense to that. Um, you know, some people didn't like it. One person said, let's see, quote unquote, Ludacris really found the whitest African woman he could find and married her. L M F A O. <laughs> and another person wrote, just like Lance Gross, <laughs> and Lance's last name Gross is spelled in all caps, <laughs> Gross. Ludacris is going to play this off. Um, quote unquote, social media is toxic. People are too sensitive. Blah, blah, blah. As if words don't matter. Bum ass, color struck black men using their big platforms to reiterate the superiority of having light skin. So, that woman's not triggered at all. Another person wrote, ha 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 ha. Ludacris called his daughter half African light skin. She was dancing to a Nyjah song, by the way. <laughs> that was so ignorant and uncalled for. But hey, I'm a full African dark skin. That's how I'm describing myself from now on. Another person wrote, Sigh, Ludacris's caption was very unnecessary, as if there isn't as if there isn't light skinned Africans. And what's being light skinned gotta do with the baby dancing? Woo, I can't. <laughs> um, another one. Um, I don't know why Ludacris had to say, quote unquote, half African light skinned baby. And um, this is the last one. Ludacris' wife was born and raised in Gabon. That's probably what he was referring to when he stated half African. The light skin part is weird, but typical. Depending on how his wife identifies, she may make the distinction from being black and being African. Some people do. All right. So read some, you know, responses from the Twitter, uh, you know, black Twitter, well, black social media. I'll say. Um, I think these responses 
Yeah, well, these actually were tweets. Um, because he posted it on Instagram. But these are tweets. Whatever. Black social media, right? So, when I heard about this story, I was like, hmm, this is, this is something. Um, I didn't, like, I heard about this story on YouTube. As how news is being distributed nowadays. Uh, certain news, you know. Yeah. Um, I will say that there is a difference between the Lance Gross situation and the Ludacris situation. Um, of course, there are similarities, but I'll explain the difference with that. Um, Lance Gross is with a, you know, a light-skinned woman who could possibly pass as biracial, and saying, and Lance Gross is with her saying you know, how much he loves, like, his dark-skinned son, or, oh, his dark-skinned son is, his, like, his son's color and melanin is coming in, you know, in so many words, basically. But, you know, people took some issues with that because it was like, well, if that was such a big deal for you, why not just marry and procreate with a woman who has the same, or, you know, uh, at least a similar skin tone to as yours why would you be with a woman who has who's more so on the other end of the skin tone spectrum if the skin tone of your child was that important all right so some people kind of took a took some issues with that because it's like well okay on one hand it seems like you value dark skin but you may only value it in certain ways, not completely. Basically, when it's not, uh, like, when it's on a woman, he won't value it, or he doesn't value it as much. I don't know. I'm just making conjecture here based on observation, based on people's commentary, etc. All right? When it comes to the ludicrous situation, if Ludacris wanted a light-skinned child, then he did the right thing. You know, not saying that we should have skin tone preferences for our children, but unfortunately, some people do. Let's be real. We live in a very color-struck community, who's, you know, a community that's very much satisfied with colorism. Um, and also, we live in a society that is very focused and fixated on looks. You know, looks matter. I, you know, I hate to say it, but looks matter. Um, and skin tone factors into looks for people. Um, so when it comes to the ludicrous situation, I think that if he did want a light-skinned child, then I think he actually did the right thing by having a child with a light-skinned woman, right? That At least that makes sense. Lance's, Lance Gross' situation doesn't really make sense, right? That doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. <clears throat> so, but, but notice, though. Please note this. This is something to note. Lance Gross and Ludacris are... All right, they are upholding the agenda, the colorism agenda in the black community, right? They are. Dark skinned sons, like dark skinned, brown skinned sons, light skinned, mixed biracial daughters, right? They're upholding that agenda, right? Just, I think that kind of is going over people's heads too. Like, both of them are upholding that agenda there, you know? They're pushing it. <laughs> They're pushing that agenda. Um, um, also, I want to talk about Ludacris's wife for a moment because she actually has spoken out about colorism before. Um, let me get this article up. But yeah, uh, Ludacris's wife, um, she spoke about colorism about February 2018. So a little over a year ago, she actually spoke out spoke out about colorism. And I'll kind of read and go through some things from this article. I'm going to try and give you more so the abridged version of it. Um, 
to see. Eudoxy herself, a caramel-coated cutie, admits that it has been a real struggle trying to persuade her brown-skinned family their deep melanin is beautiful instead of detestable. There was a recent Essence cover with the dark-skinned women of Black Panther that she says motivated her to share her testimony, and now it has enlightened, educated, and empowered her younger sister and others. Eudoxy shared the Essence cover on her IG page and captioned it with her poignant testimony in tribute to mahogany hued folks in her family and across the globe. Quote unquote, I grew up in I grew up the only light skinned person in my family. As a kid, I struggled with that and wanted to be dark. What a loser. As an adult, I struggled teaching my mother, sister, cousins, aunts in Gabon how beautiful they are. They have all wanted to bleach their skin and for many years it has hurt me. I explained to them that beauty has nothing to do with your skin complexion. I think to some people it does. Again, I'm being honest and I'm being candid. Unfortunately, especially in color-struck communities and color-struck social situations or whatever you want to call it, I think people's skin tones do factor into what is considered attractive and what is what is not considered attractive, right? Let's see. Next, my husband and I are raising my beautiful youngest sister in a house full of light skin. Every day I remind her of how beautiful, strong, and smart she is. So that's good. You know, she's taking that extra step to make sure that her sister, who's brown skin, her little sister grows up and, you know, has a positive self image. Let's see. This image just brought tears to my eyes and empowered me. Thank you, At Essence, for celebrating those beautiful black women. I will buy many copies and take them to Gabon with me this summer. This is the most beautiful cover I've seen. I see my grandmother, my mother, my sisters, aunts, and cousins. Black Panther movie is such an important movie for our culture and our kids. How did she turn out to be the only light-skinned person? Just wondering. <laughs> Because it seemed like her whole family is, like, brown skin. Not saying that that doesn't happen, because it does, but I'm just saying. I just was wondering about that. But, yeah. Um, you know, but that was nice to hear. So that was um, Eudoxy's, um, you know, testimony and story about colorism. And to be fair, Eudoxy and Ludacris are two different people despite being married. They are two different people, so they might not have the same views when it comes to colorism, for better or worse, okay? Just like when you're with your significant other, you guys don't always have the same exact viewpoints, right? But of course, you know, birds of a uh, people will go by the same birds of a feather flock together, which, you know, is valid. But also not always 100% true. All right. Um, but I do kind of want to talk about something that I do feel that is like low key a little hypocrisy, hypocrisy at play, a little hypocritical. Because oftentimes you will see folks talking about you know darker skinned children and uplifting them. And talking, you know, raving on about, you know, how beautiful, you know, their dark skin is, saying that it's chocolate, saying that it's, you know, melanated. And I'm not saying that that's not needed. I'm not saying that's that's not. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing to do. I'm not saying that it's not needed. I'm not saying that it's necessarily comes from a place of malice, you know, but. I'm just kind of bringing up something to sort of compare the situations with, right? Uh, folks talking about, you know, again, primarily probably black women, you know, talking about, you know, how much they want, you know, quote unquote, a chocolate baby as if babies are made of chocolate. So right there, we already talked about some low key fetishization anyway. 
and as I any as well to keep it real, anytime a black person is talking about chocolate and referring to skin tone, I'm automatically well, a lot of the times I get the side eye to that. Like we is not food, and <laughs> we is not consumable. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when folks talking about chocolate and comparing themselves to like confectionery treats and shit, I'm just like. Uh, given the side eye because I'm like, you know, it seems like you're fetishizing yourself and others versus just calling it for what it is. Can we just say dark skin? And usually when it comes to the men, I think the men tend to be referred to more so as just dark skin as well. You'll hear chocolate thrown in too. But I think when it comes to the women, chocolate is more so used a lot more than dark skin, right? Um, so yeah, it's like, can we, ha is it okay to have the light-skinned equivalent of that? Because I think people kind of get triggered when it's the light-skinned equivalent at play, right? And, you know, this is sort of like a newer thing for me that I never really picked up on until I got on YouTube, to be honest, because I never really noticed that or seen that at play in my day-to-day -day life but uh, yeah it's like when it comes to children and skin tone i think people sometimes are triggered when like we refer to children children's skin tone which is understandable but at the same time i'm like okay i'm 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 seeing some hypocrisy too because we have heard we were refer to adults with as like skin tones right and it's like well it's different it's an adult not a kid well yeah but isn't that still sort of helping perpetuate a divide right to continue a divide right I mean like again these same women who are complaining have their preferences let's keep it real they do and they don't care. Usually their preferences are for darker skinned men, which is fine. They have a right to have that preference, of course. I'm not saying that they can't have it or that they shouldn't have it, but I'm just saying preferences are all fine and good and all fine and dandy until you ain't the preference. That's the thing. That's what I'm getting at here. Like people talking about this, that, and the third and about, oh, you know, that's ignorant. Oh, you shouldn't say that. But I'm like, you do the same thing, though. Right? Technically, you do the same thing. Right? And again, we all have a right to have a preference, even when it comes to the um, skin tone of our children. I don't think we should, but unfortunately, people do. And I think people, they do have a right. I'm not going to argue and say that you don't have a right to say how you want your children to look, right? Um, although I wonder if this had been like, say, like Steph Curry, how would I think how would people be reacting? I think they would they would love to have, you know, some something to drag Steph Curry down with. You know, I know that kind of is like completely random, but I kind of feel like if Steph Curry had said something like this, people would just love to take this and just drag him through the mud with, you know, <clears throat> you know, um, but yeah, I do notice that when it comes to like, um, having pride and like being light skinned, it's sort of, it's sort of like seen with suspicion. I don't know if that's the word, but it's people kind of take more there's more animosity towards it for some reason. And I guess maybe it's because people may feel like, well, is it really necessary to say? Kind of like when it comes to white people. Is it really necessary necessary for white people to say that they have like racial pride, like they're proud to be white? It's like, well, duh. It's like, what point in, in the history of this country has whiteness ever been considered less than? What point in history has whiteness ever can ever been considered bad? You know, it's always assumed that it's good, right? 
So perhaps that's at play with when it comes to like light skin, as well as mixed and biracial folks, right? Where, you know, darker skin folks are thinking like, well, duh, of course you're proud. Like, you know, you're usually in a position where it's a benefit for you, right? You know. So I kind of, yeah, let's see where it's, folks are coming from to an extent. Uh, but as I said, I do see some hypocrisy at play. And that's just me keeping it real, keeping it 100. And that's why y'all fuck with me, right? Because y'all want the real. Y'all want it. If I wasn't being real, and if I was just being, oh, everything's just okay, and we're all one big happy community, y'all wouldn't fuck with me, right? Y'all want the real. So that's the real for you, all right? <clears throat> And let me keep it even a little bit more real with y'all. Like, if I ever had, like, a dark-skinned son, I would just throw it in the trash, honestly. Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Um, I actually um, talked about that um, in a video. Um, like, if I ever had a, a, a dark-skinned son, right? Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then some people were kind of bringing up that whole situation with Jaleel Day or Jaleel Adai as well. And, you know, I'm like, well, mm, similarities but differences. Um, but, yeah, I think that just is another thing to put on the list, right? <laughs> like another piece of bullshit just to put on the list, right? Um, but, like I said, people do have a right to have their preferences. I don't think that we should have skin tone preferences when it comes to the way that our kids look. But I will say, if you do have a skin tone preference, then I would suggest that you at least be smart about it. And, like, don't get with someone who's the opposite skin tone as you, and you want someone, a child with the same skin tone as you. Light skinned women, dark skinned men, right? You know, that's the thing. It's like sometimes common sense just goes out the window with you, Negroes, sometimes. Like, at least, again, when it comes to the light skinned mixed biracial women for some reason, I guess that's probably the only type of men that they can get. That's part of the reason, too. Then when it comes to these dark skinned, brown skinned dudes, they be on some bullshit too. Like, I don't understand these Negroes sometimes. It just don't make no sense. Like, like is there a sort of like a mental issue at play? Problem. Colorism. We could say that that is a mental issue. We could make an argument on that. Um, uh, but yeah, just, again, I find that just extremely interesting, by the way. And, again, I've spoken about this in previous videos, by the way, too. Again, nothing new. Like, same bullshit, different day, a different cast of people. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the soul of it is still the same. <laughs> yeah. um, but I will mention, like, some of these women... Um, Especially these, like these, well, I'll say both, honestly. Like, I was in the comments section on a YouTuber's video, and this YouTuber is, like, extremely popular when it comes to colorism conversations. She's a female. She's a dark-skinned female. I think we all know who I'm talking about here. But I was in the comments section of one of her videos, and someone had, this, like, female had posted, like, something like, oh, you know, I wanted a dark skinned child and it came out light skinned or something like that. And I had posted, well, just be happy with what God blessed you with. And then she wanted to um, clap back with, like, no shit, Sherlock. And then I clapped back with, like, well, you shouldn't be on here complaining since it's no shit, Sherlock, right? Be happy with what you're blessed with, what God blessed you with, instead of worrying and being so fixated on the superficial right some you know like people more concerned about the damn skin tone of the child than the health of the child 
that don't make no sense. But that just shows how far gone and superficial some people really are and how deep this stuff really runs. Right. Um, but again, it's always a, like a light-skinned woman doing some bullshit like this. Honestly, it really is. Um, as well as always like a dark-skinned, brown-skinned nigga up in the mix. When it comes to colorism, you will always find a brown-skinned, dark-skinned nigga up in the mix somewhere. And usually a light-skinned mixed biracial woman in the mix too. Partners in crime, right? You know, uh, piss and shit, you know, the piss and shit brigade, honestly. It's just, like, come on, like, y'all gotta do better. But I think I've said pretty much all I have to say for the moment. So let me know what you guys think. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now. Uh, but one more thing I want to mention. So do you think that we should have skin tone preferences for our children and our significant others? Or do you think that perhaps we should not have skin tone preferences for our children and not skin tone preferences for our significant others? Or perhaps do you think that we should have skin tone preferences for our significant other but not have skin tone preferences for our children? Like, just wondering, just want to put that out there too, right? Because again, preferences are all well and good for people until they ain't the preference, then they in the feelings all of a sudden, right? When you when they ain't the preference anymore, right? Again, this is just the hypocrisy and fuck shit that I'm seeing, and that I just need to call out because I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that bullshit. I don't appreciate the hypocrisy. That's ultimately it. It's like, okay, if this is going to be how it is, let's just make it how it is across the board. But when your feelings get hurt, then it's an issue, right? When you feel a little hit to your side, then it's now it's an issue, right? But... Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.